All right, time for another double movie review. Coincidentally, both of these films center around Airbnbs. Is that the only thing that these two films have in common? Hmm, that makes me want, yeah, that's about it. Let's just roll on with the rest of this video. What is up, everybody? Random, random man here. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time, as I have just mentioned how I am reviewing not one, but two movies in this video. By the way, here is the time skip for the second review of the video, in case you want to skip right to that one, as firstly, I am here bringing you my review for Barbarian. Now the plot of this horror film basically follows a young woman, played by Georgina Campbell, who finds out that the home she rented was double booked with another man, played by Bill Skarsgård, and discovers a dark secret in the house. Going into this movie, I honestly did not know what to expect. Despite hearing buzz about this film from its premiere at this year's San Diego Comic-Con, I did not pay attention that much to any of its promotional material, and though it is a horror movie and I am usually averse to that kind of film, I mainly was interested in it for its writer and director. This film is written and directed by Zach Kreger, who is most famous for being a part of the comedy troupe The Whitest Kids You Know, who had a TV show that initially first ran on Fuse, then moved over onto IFC. I love these guys. They have helped shape my sense of humor since I was about a preteen. Now, prior to Barbarian, Kreger, alongside fellow Whitest Kids You Know member Trevor Moore, R.I.P., made their directorial debuts with 2009's Miss March, which they also co-wrote, produced, and starred in. It was absolutely decimated by critics when it came out, either because their sketch comedy sensibilities didn't translate over into a feature film, or they just made a bad sex comedy. Now, Kreger is making his solo screenwriting and directorial debut for film with Barbarian, and it's interesting to see how he is someone that comes from comedy and is going over to doing horror. And like I said, I hardly knew anything about this movie going in to see it, and I was mainly in it for some of the buzz I heard about it with early preview screenings and the name of Zach Kreger alone. Luckily for me, I was able to head out and see this thing in theaters where it is only currently available. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Georgina Campbell as Tess, our main protagonist who goes to Detroit to stay overnight at an Airbnb while she's in town for a job interview. Now, when she gets there, it's already a bad situation for discovering how this house has already been booked by someone else and is trying to make do with the not-so-safe environment she is staying in. Now, Campbell, I think, makes this character super likable. She is someone who is easy to root for while still playing herself up as a realistic person to making mistakes and also thinking rationally as to what to do with the situation she is in. This instantly comes into play within the opening minutes as she meets the man who is already staying in this Airbnb she booked, Keith, played by Bill Skarsgård. Now his casting is interesting here because many of us know him as the title character of the recent film adaptations of Stephen King's It, and uh, he looks like at first the kind of guy that doesn't seem to be trustworthy, but he tries to make the most out of this awkward situation too, and welcoming Tess inside and also offering anything she might need. And with him, I also think that he gives a very strong performance and their chemistry or them really trying to rationalize what is going on with this predicament they're in was something that I thought was so palpable. These two are at first the only major players of the film, and if you've seen the poster for Barbarian, you would know that there is a third name on it, and that is Justin Long, who plays a character named AJ, who is eventually involved with this narrative. Without giving too much away, Long is basically playing against type with the nice guy kind of roles he usually plays in being this unlikable and skeevy dude. And 
I really don't want to divulge too much into how he figures into the plot, but I gotta say that he gives a solid turn here. Zack Kreger even shows up in a super minor supporting role when Long's character comes in, as well as his real-life wife, Sarah Paxton. Fun fact, in case you didn't know, they are actually a couple in real life. And yeah, she plays multiple roles here that I don't want to give away either. In speaking of me not wanting to give stuff away, getting into the writing and directing by Kreger, the basic plot synopsis I gave earlier in this review is all I want to really divulge into narratively, as that basically covers about the first act or so of this film. Again, I went into this movie basically blind, and what eventually unfolds is something that is unpredictable and twisty in its flow overall. And what Kreger does here as a filmmaker is keep us on our toes to try and figure out what is happening with this whole Airbnb situation that our initial two main characters are thrust into. Though I kept an open mind about this movie, as I always do, when it was beginning in its initial minutes, I did think at one point, is this going to amount to a bunch of haunted house horrors throughout? Especially when this one cheap jump scare occurred within this first section. But again, the movie eventually turns into something else, especially when Long's character enters the story, and it does eventually circumvent back into what was initially set up with our first two characters and the way this movie is tonally it has this creepy sense to itself that there is something underneath the surface both literally and figuratively going on with this property and this movie tonally as well toes the line between being very unsettling and also funny at times kind of similar to what another comedian turned horror director has done Jordan Peele Kreger is not above throwing in a good laugh or two into certain moments that do liven up the levity of the whole situation. The movie, I would say, is self-aware at times to what it is doing with this kind of story that is being told, yet it is still grounded enough to where this could be something realistically happening to what these characters have been put into, and then as we see further details put into light, that is when the movie really does become an engaging ride. I say all of this too because as someone who mostly has a hard time suspending my disbelief when watching horror movies, I found myself to be legit scared at some moments here, even compared to some other horror movies I have seen this year. Just with a lot of the imagery that is put in, which I found to be straight up nasty, and it's with how it is set up and framed, not having to do with violence a lot of the time either. Just who unnerving stuff that is present here for sure. And this also contributes to how this movie comes together on a technical scale. The way this movie is shot, it is shot pristinely, and a lot of moments do have to do with darkness. And when we see sources of light come in, they are only usually done by either the flashlights on characters' phones or proper flashlights that they are holding in front of them. And even in some moments, we get to see the arms of characters in front of the camera to put ourselves in their point of view in whatever might be coming at them in trying to navigate what they are trying to get out of. And that just had the immersion factor get pumped up even more. The same also goes with how the film is cut together through its editing, the music too. It sounded like a typical horror score, but I thought it heightened the tension for what it had to do and the way it is all mapped out and paced together. The movie runs at just over an hour and 40 minutes, which made the most of it for all of the different directions that this movie goes into. And and if I had to cite any issues, really, there aren't too many of them aside from me wanting to complain about the tropes that horror movies tend to have. As I've mentioned, horror is my least favorite genre of film, but I think that a lot of this film really held up in trying to be self-aware. I will say that in the final 10 minutes, the movie did stretch my suspension of disbelief a little too much into how something that happens in that portion could have happened and still ended up occurring in that way? I don't know. I can't describe it properly because, again, I don't want to divulge too many details about this movie. But I did think it ended in an abrupt way that just had me go, wow, 
what did I just watch all together? And it's a wild ride to say the least. In recent weeks, we have gotten a bit of a drought for new movies not playing in theaters. Just before uh, the Labor Day holiday weekend got underway last week, I did go out and see Top Gun Maverick a third time in theaters. Still my favorite movie of 2022 thus far. But if you are looking for something that you either know nothing about because you have not seen the trailers or even if you have seen the trailers, it doesn't divulge too much information and you are a horror fan especially, then I would definitely recommend seeing Barbarian. It got someone like myself who is usually averse to the genre to really be singing a lot of its praises and I think that this could be a real surprise hit. With that, my final verdict for Barbarian is four out of five stars. Finally, here is my review for Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Based on the series of short films of the same name by Dean Fleischer Camp and Jenny Slate, the plot of this mockumentary dramedy basically follows our title One Inch Anthropomorphic Shell, voiced by Slate, who ekes out a colorful existence with his grandmother Connie, voiced by Isabella Rossellini, as they are the sole survivors of a mysterious tragedy. However, when a documentary filmmaker, played by Fleischer Camp, discovers them, his documentation soon leads them to rediscover their past. Going into this movie, I was very much looking forward to seeing it. Like with Barbarian, I heard a lot of buzz about it before its release. It premiered at last year's Telluride Film Festival, and here in the U.S., it started a limited release run back in late June before expanding to a wider release in mid-July. But it never came to a theater close by, for me at least, and I thought that I had missed out on the chance on seeing this movie in theaters until recently when my local chain, shout out to Classic Cinemas, acquired this movie at one of my close by theaters and I got the opportunity to luckily be able to see it in theaters and it is also currently available on demand. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Jenny Slate as the voice of our title show, Marcel. Now she is reprising her role here from the initial trio of short films that have been uploaded to YouTube and were created by herself and Dean Fleischer Camp. And hearing her voice after having seen those three short films prior to this movie, again, with how she talks like this and has a very airy but very sweet kind of tone. Yeah, that was a bad impression. I apologize. Just hearing that again and seeing uh, her character just go around and be this very wondrous and curious being is something that is so sweet to see, to say the least. The way we see him navigate around this Airbnb he is living in despite being so minuscule in size and trying to get regular tasks done and also trying to just further discover the world around him, it further adds on to the appeal that this movie has in its very simplicity. Also adding on a lot here is Isabella Rossellini as Connie, Marcel's grandmother, who has this grandeur about her that elevates anything she is in, but here she perfectly fits into the grandmotherly role that is here in conjunction with Marcel. Both of them have very natural chemistry. Then the only other main character who is mainly seen off camera is the documentary filmmaker Dean Fleischer Camp himself, who is also this movie's director in this being his feature directorial debut, and he also serves as a co-producer, co-writer, and co-editor. Jenny Slate, who is also a co-producer and co-writer on this film in real life, is the ex-wife to Fleischer Camp. They were both previously married and they have reunited in making a feature film adaptation of the shorts they initially worked on over a decade ago. And that partially goes into some of the way this movie is written out and goes with its narrative. It has a meta commentary to where Fleischer Camp as a character in this movie 
has separated from his wife and has moved into this Airbnb where he does discover Marcel and his grandma Connie. And I think with that, along with a lot of other themes that are divulged into here, speak a lot of wonders with how this movie is so short and sweet. It really cannot be overstated here for how this film has a humongous heart in its intrinsic slash savory slash petite package altogether. And with the main root of the story involving Marcel's day-to-day -day life being documented by Fleischer Camp and also him wanting to rediscover his past after having lost it and only being with his grandma, that is something that is relatable to a lot of people, even in the context of this being with a really tiny anthropomorphic shell. And it also connects with how the style of this movie in being a mockumentary has a lot of things going for it too, with it being a hybrid of live action and stop motion animation, like with those original three short films. And I think that it makes the movie just feel so easy breezy. In further talking about this movie on a technical scale, I have to give an immediate shout out to its original score, which was done by Disaster Piece, who also recently did the music for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. That horror comedy had a bombastic electronic score with its reflection of the Gen Z characters in it. And here with Marcel the Shell, it is much more low key and relaxing with how it is a reflection of its main character here too, with all of the awe-inspiring details that this character takes a lot of joy and pleasure in with the environment that he is living in. And also just with this movie having a pleasant aura about it. And it clocking in at about an hour and a half really does a lot with its own very compact running time. I honestly don't have that much more to say about Marcel the Shell with shoes on because it is, as I described earlier, in being a short and sweet film and thus to the point of what it is trying to say. And it takes someone who has a cold, cold heart to not like this movie. And that is what you have if you don't at least enjoy this movie on a basic front for how it is such a pleasant viewing experience overall. Whether you have seen the three short films this is based on like I have, or you're just looking at this as a movie on its own, there is a lot to take away from it. I would go as far as to say that it is the most heartwarming movie I have seen all year thus far, and in case you couldn't already tell, I loved Marcel the Shell with shoes on. This is one of my faves of the year thus far. I highly recommend it. With that, my final verdict for Marcel the Shell with shoes on is four and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Barbarian and Marcel the Shell with shoes on, social media links in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.